Welcome to Asia's IS Institute. This is our fourth lecture on the series on India since independence by Vipan Chandra. So in the third lecture, we had discussed chapter number seven, Consolidation of India as a Nation One, in which we had discussed about uh, unity and diversity in the country and various forms of diversity and linguistic diversity as such, as also about the official language. Under the Indian constitution, we have official language being stated as English being the official language to be used till 1965 and Hindi to be made into official language then. Henceforth, if there is a requirement, then central government can continue the use of English even beyond 1965. And we see till date both English and Hindi remain the official languages. You should remember India does not have a national language. So there is no one national language. There are 22 recognized languages, Indian languages under the constitution and the schedule 8 of the constitution. So that is there and official language remain English and Hindi both. So here we come to chapter number 8, Consolidation of India as a Nation 2, which talks about linguistic reorganization of states. So as our strategies, we will be highlighting the important sentences, important statements in the text. So that is what we will go through and that gives us a gist of the entire chapter and we can cover it efficiently and it will be helpful in revision as well. So, it says the reorganization of the states on the basis of language, a major aspect of national consolidation and integration came to the fore almost immediately after independence. So, the demand was to have states formed on the basis of language. Earlier, the provinces, they were not on the basis of language like Bombay province comprised of present day Maharashtra and Gujarat, major regions of the two states and it did not, uh, it was not on the basis of language. So, this demand came immediately after independence. Language is closely related to culture and therefore to the customs of the people. That's evident, that's true. Besides, the massive spread of education and growth of mass literacy can only occur through the medium of the mother tongue. So, this was the belief of various national leaders then including Mahatma Gandhi that mass literacy can take place if education is given in the medium of the mother tongue. So, regional language. So, that was important. It was also said that democracy can become real to the common people only when politics and administration are conducted through the language they understand. But this language, the mother tongue, cannot be the medium of education or administration or judicial activity unless a state is formed on the basis of such a predominant language. So, that was the basis on which it was demanded first there should be linguistic states. That the language, based on language, states are formed and then those states have medium of education based on the language. They have the administration in that language, in the, on that regional language and judicial activity also conducted accordingly. So, in that language. So, that was the basis or the genesis of the demand for linguistic states. Here you can see Gandhiji had also stated, the redistribution of provinces on a linguistic basis was necessary if provincial languages were to grow to their full height. So, this was the viewpoint of Mahatma Gandhi as well. But the national leadership had second thoughts on the subject immediately after independence. And the reason for that, that linguistic states were not formed was partition. And also partition took place immediately after independence and then the Kashmir problem arose. Warlike like situation was there between India and Pakistan immediately after independence. And the leadership felt that the most important task for the present was to consolidate national unity and any effort undertaken immediately to redraw the internal boundaries might dislocate administration and economic development and intensify regional and linguistic rivalries, unleash destructive forces and damage the unity of the country. So that was the reason why this issue was put on the back burner that like linguistic states should not be formed. Nehru had stated on 27th November 1947, he said, first things come first and the first thing is security and stability of India. So that was the viewpoint. Even in the Constituent Assembly, Linguistic Provinces uh, Commission was appointed in 1948, which was headed by Justice S.K. Dar. So this you should know even Indian Polity Lakshmi Khan speaks about this. So 1948, we had Linguistic Provinces Commission headed by Justice S.K. Dar to inquire into the desirability of linguistic provinces. And the Dar Commission advised against the step that linguistic provinces should not be formed at the time for it might threaten national unity and also, administra be, and also will be administratively inconvenient. So this was the viewpoint of Dar Commission. Then Congress appointed a committee in 1948 itself that was called JVP committee. It comprised of three members, Jawaharlal Nehru, J standing for Jawaharlal Nehru, V standing for uh, Sadar Vallabhbhai Patel and P standing for Pattabhi Sitaramaya. So this JVP committee of Congress, it was not the government committee, 
constituent assembly had appointed linguistic provinces provincial com, provinces commission that is the dar commission and congress the political party had appointed this committee jvp committee so pitta pattavi sitaramayya then was the president of congress so this jvp committee was again appointed on the same issue to examine the question of fresh and this committee advised again same against the creation of linguistic states for the time being emphasizing that unity national security and economic development were the needs of the army so that was the viewpoint in 1948 jvp committee however accepted that a strong case for the formation of andhra out of madras province existed so madras province was tamil majorly tamil speaking and also andhra which is telugu speaking population was also part of it so particularly a leadership in tamil nadu was also agreeable to it but it did not concede to this demand immediately too because the two sides could not agree on which state should take madras city so madras city which was present day known as chennai so both if two states are formed then who go the capital which will go to which state was the issue the andhra leaders were un unwilling to concede madras even though on linguistic as well as geographic grounds it belonged to tamil nadu so that's why formation of states on the basis of language was also a hindrance because the capital was the point of contention that who would get the capital of the combined province when the states are formed by division of that province on 19 october 1952 a popular freedom fighter patti shriramulu undertook a fast unto death over the demand for a separate andhra and expired he died by, uh, after 58 days of his fast unto death so this number may vary but yeah this 58 days is what this book mentions his death was followed by 3 days of rioting demonstrations hartals and violence all over andhra the government immediately gave in and considered the demand for a separate state of andhra which finally came into existence in october 1953 and simultaneously tamil nadu was created as a tamil speaking state so that was the first linguistic state formed on uh, in 1952 Uh, that is andhra andhra state was formed so that was a telugu speaking population then in august 1953 nehru appointed a states reorganization commission src with justice fazl ali k m panikkar and hridayanath kunzru as members and again the objective was the same to examine objectively and dispassionately the entire question of reorganization of states of the union so that was the objective and states reorganization commission submitted its report in 2 years in october 1955 it said while laying down that due consideration should be given to administrative and economic factors it recognized for the most part the linguistic principle that yes linguistic principle is important and recommended redrawing of state boundaries on the basis of language so the commission however also opposed splitting of bombay and punjab so though it's called for linguistic provinces but splitting of bombay means marathi and gujarati speaking population were together in bombay so he was uh, the commission opposed splitting of bombay and even punjab punjab and punjab and haryani speaking hindi speaking population together so there also it opposed that division that splitting so that is one point the state reorganization act was formed based on the recommendation of src which was accepted by the parliament parliament passed state reorganization act in november 1956 and it provided for 14 states and 6 centrally administered territories and the strongest reaction against the src report and the state reorganization cap act came from maharashtra where widespread rioting broke out and 80 people were killed in bombay city in police firings in 1956 so immediately after the act was passed you can see so even by before the act was passed we had seen police firings and protests in maharashtra So under pressure government decided in June 1956 to divide Bombay state into two linguistic states so Bombay province was divided into Maharashtra and Gujarat and Bombay city became a separate centrally administered state but this was strongly opposed opposed by maharashtrians so Bombay geographically also belonged to within Maharashtra so there was a movement started in Maharashtra which was called Samyukt Maharashtra Samiti and there was also movement started in Gujarat called Maha Gujarat Janata Parishad so these movements in both the parts of the state bombay province as such were demanding bombay be part of it and in maharashtra even a large section of congressmen joined the demand for unilingual maharashtra with bombay as its capital cd deshmukh who was the finance minister in central cabinet resigned from his office on this question of bombay being given to maharashtra so he demanded bombay be given to maharashtra he was the finance minister in the central cabinet cd deshmukh 
the government finally agreed in may 1960 to bifurcate the state of bombay into maharashtra and gujarat with bombay city being included in maharashtra and ahmedabad being made the capital of gujarat so finally linguistic provinces here were also formed in 1960 and then in, uh, also in 1956 the state of pepsu had been merged with punjab so pepsu actually stands for patiala and east punjab states union so this was a state of india uniting eight princely states between 1948 and 1956 so pepsu was also merged with punjab in 1956 and here also the demand was there for linguistic state the sikh communalists led by akali dal and the hindu communalists led by jansang used the linguistic issue to promote communal politics so language was also different here and religion was also there so sikh the punjabi speaking sikh and the hindus were there in living together in punjab so using the issue of language communal politics had been initiated here nehru as also the majority of punjab congressmen felt that the demand for a punjabi state was basically a communal demand for a sikh majority state dressed up as a language bill so this was the viewpoint of the congressmen then and the src had also refused to accept the demand as we saw above demand for formation bifurcation of bombay province as well as of punjab province so bombay we saw through agitation finally bombay was split into maharashtra and gujarat and this is about punjab now so src had also refused to accept the demand for a separate punjabi speaking state on the ground that this would not solve either the language or the communal problem of punjab but finally 1966 indira gandhi agreed to the division of punjab into two punjabi and hindi speaking states of punjab and haryana with the pahadi speaking district of kangra and a major part of hoshiarpur district being merged with adjoining state of himachal pradesh and chandigarh the newly built city and the capital of united punjab was made a union territory and was to serve as a joint capital of punjab and haryana which is true till date so this was also in 1966 linguistic states were formed out of punjab province under indira gandhi then state reorganization it is said is best regarded as clearing the ground for national integration so this is a statement which is important because the organization of states was done but this was to ensure national integration not to divide the nation so linguistic reorganization of states has not in any manner it is said adversely affected the federal structure of the union or weakened or paralyzed the center as many had feared so we have linguistic reorganization of states done and we have seen that it has not resulted in any adverse effect as was feared at that time so the federal structure has not been affected it has not paralyzed or weakened the central government either then we look at other states being formed so disputes over boundaries between different states linguistic minorities and economic issues such as sharing of water which we see till date you know interstate river water sharing issues power sharing surplus food related issues still persist so state reorganization has happened but conflicts between states continue is what it tries to say then this is regarding minority languages so it talks about how overall nearly 18% of india's population do not speak the official language of the state where they live as their mother tongue so those states have been formed on linguistic basis but there are minorities who don't speak the state language so it is said overall 18% of india's population does not speak the official language of the state where they live so that is not their mother tongue so variation among the states is high according to 1971 census it says percentage of linguistic minorities to total population ranged from 4% in kerala to 34% in karnataka means 34% of karnataka population is non kannad speaking 3.9% in assam and non assamese and 44.5% of the population jammu and kashmir is not speaking the state language so that is then it talks about how fundamental rights have also been provided for linguistic minorities article 30 of the constitution states that all minorities whether based on religion and language so you should remember the indian constitution recognizes minorities based on two aspects linguistic minorities and religious minorities so it article 30 also states all minorities whether based on religion or language shall have a right to establish and administer educational institutions of their choice and more important that states shall not in granting it to educational institutions discriminate against any educational institution on the ground that it was under the management of a minority whether based on religion or language so that was that is article 30 which ensures that linguistic minorities are not sidelined 
Also, Article 347 of the Constitution lays down that on the demand of being made on behalf of a minority, President may direct that its language shall be officially recognized throughout the state or any part thereof for such purposes as might be specified. So, even a minority language in a state can also be officially recognized. So, that can be done by the president at the central level. So, this is there. Then there is Commissioner for Linguistic Minorities also which has been provided. Commissioner for Linguistic Minorities have given its reports regularly and it has noted innumerable cases of discrimination against linguistic minorities in matters of schooling, admission to technical and medical institutions, employment in state public service commissions because of lack of proficiency in the official language of the state. So such discrimination against linguistic minorities is seen in states. Also, among the minority languages, Urdu is said to be a special case because an overwhelming majority of Muslims, which is India's largest religious minority, claim Urdu as their mother tongue. Urdu is recognized as one of the India's national languages too. It is listed in the 8th schedule of the constitution. But Urdu was not the official language of any state except the small state of Jammu and Kashmir, where the mother tongues were in any case Kashmiri, Dogri and Ladakh. So, Urdu is the official language of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. But uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, Citizens are also not having Urdu as their mother tongue. They have Kashmiri, Dogri and Ladakhi as their mother tongue. So consequently, Urdu did not get official support in any part of the country. On the contrary, subterfuge, subterfuge was that Hindi and Urdu were not two separate languages and therefore there was no need to make Urdu a second official language. So this was the stand being given that Hindi and Urdu are the same. So there is no need for a separate uh, second official language as Urdu. Urdu speakers therefore were persistent in demanding that Urdu should be recognized as the second official language in the states where it has large presence, especially in UP and Bihar. The UP government on its part was equally consist consistent and successful in opposing this demand. SRC had also recommended that at least 30% of the population of state should speak a language before it could be made second official or regional language. So that condition was not satisfied. 30% of the population was not Urdu speaking. This is there. So, while many Muslims regard Urdu as the language of the community as such, many Hindu communists are hostile to it because of their anti-Muslim ideological position. Also, despite active hostility of many and official neglect, Urdu continues not only to exist but even grow in terms of literary output, journals and newspapers and especially as the language of films and television because of its inherent vigor and cultural roots among the Indian people. So, films though it, they are Hindi feature films but the terms used are more so Urdu terms rather than Hindi terms. So, Urdu continues to exist though it is neglected. So, this is the th eighth chapter completed. So, that is it. We will discuss ninth chapter in the next series. Thank you.